suppose you are given a piece of uh, C sample code. You don't have the full body here for the switch statement, right? Uh, all the case labels are missing. We need to reverse engineer that. How can we achieve that goal? So we are given some assembly code fragment. We are assuming X is at EBV plus eight. Okay, the first argument X is usually EBV plus eight. Uh, so we are moving eight plus EBV to EAX. That means EAX is X. We are adding two to EAX, okay. And then we are comparing whether the value is greater than six. So we are saying is X plus two greater than six. That means we are saying if X is greater than four, okay, uh, jump to this label L2. So we can directly uh, now construct the scenario easily, right? The X must have been uh, matched against the following case statements. Case, first case is negative two, okay. And some code we don't know yet, whatever code there is. And then case negative one, case zero, all the way until case four. Case zero, I'm not writing all the case statements, case four, okay. So these are the possible case labels that may be hiding here, we don't know that, okay. So to sum up, the case labels are ranging from minus two through four inclusive, all right. Uh, let's look at the actual jump table to figure out whether all the cases are explicitly listed or not. Okay, how do we do that? We can just scroll down and I will show you the jump table we have here. The jump table is shown here for us. So this is case uh, for the zeroth case, meaning we have minus two and we add it with two, right? So this is the case for uh, zero. Okay, this is case one. Uh, let me first put positive numbers and then we rewrite it. Case two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, but remember our case labels are not zero, one through six. It's starting with minus two because we are adding a, a two to it to make it positive or non-negative. So, so this case, although, although I call it zero, you should subtract every case by two. So this means this is minus two, this is minus one, right? This is minus two, minus one, and uh, let me put an arrow mark here. So this is minus one, this is case zero, case one, case two, case three and case four, okay. Let's look at the default statement. It says, if after adding two, you get more than six, that means anything more than four, when the input X is greater than four, we jump into default case. So the default case is L2, okay. So is there an L2 here also? Yeah, there it is. So for the case minus one, we are also using L2, that means case minus one is not explicitly mentioned on the case statement. So we, we I wanted to clarify that again. <clears throat> so we see here the case negative one map to L2. L2 is the default case, okay? That means there is no explicit case statement corresponding to minus one in the switch case statement, okay? So it's case two, zero, one, two, three, four are the possible cases. And we can also look at one more scenario. Two of the case labels are sharing the same value L6, L6, that means the case two and the case three have the same code base. So here, case two may be there. It will be there, case two. And then there will not be uh, any difference between case two and the case three. They both have the same code. So that's, that's another thing we can easily infer from this particular statement. All right, so to sum up whatever we learned so far is that, our assembly code adds two to the X. That means we are doing X plus two and we are comparing whether X plus two is more than six, which means we are saying is X greater than four, okay? Why do I say the case statement starts with minus two? The fact that we are adding two to it will make the minus two to be zero, right? Minus two is the smallest number in this list of numbers that I wrote. And when I add two to minus one, I get one. 
And when I add two to four, I get six. So that's the reason why I start my case label from minus two all the way to four. So we are able to successfully reverse engineer the case statements just by looking at the dump table and looking at the default values, we can figure out which labels are explicit. That's basically it. This is how you could reverse engineer uh, switch case statements. Thank you.